Today we are going back to a subject that fascinated you before. Neo. These four letters hide a titanic ambition, the desire of Saudi Arabia which wants to create a huge futuristic mega city out of the desert by the end of the decade. The metropolitan area is to be built in the northwest of the country between the Red Sea, Jordan and the Gulf of Aqaba, covering an area the size of an entire country like Belgium. First of all, Oxagon is set to become the world's largest floating structure. Standing on the shores of the Red Sea, the platform will serve as Neon's next generation port. Further inland is the Hejaz Mountains we find through Jina, a tourist city of the future which includes a huge artificial freshwater lake and a ski resort. Neon's final element is surely the one that provokes the most reaction. It's the line. A gigantic linear city, 170 kilometers long, where 9 million people will eventually thrive. But over the past year, a lot has happened around the Neon projects, and that's what we are going to see today with the progress of work on the site. In this video, I am going to bring you up to date on the latest news from Neon's mega projects, namely Sindale, Georgina, Oxagon, and finally the most impressive of them all, The Line. This is perhaps the most important announcement of recent months. For the Neon project, a new pod has been added, Sindala, a luxurious island designed to attract a wealthy clientele. This new tourist destination lies opposite Egypt Sinai, a tiny place of 8,40,000 square meters, half the size of Monaco. As you can see from promotional video, everything seems to have been designed to accommodate wealthy visitors. There will be a marina with just 86 birds so you can bring your yacht to the island. On the island, only three luxury hotels will be built. Driftwood promenade, yacht club, golf course, private beaches. Life on Sendala is like a paradise for the wealthy. The goal is to welcome 2400 visitors per day by 2028. A figure that pales in comparison with the millions of people expected to live in the line. Sendale Island is being sold as Neom's most luxurious project. A far cry from the other locations prim promises of accessibility for all. The island is aimed at wealthy European tourists who will be able to cross the Suez Canal from the old continent by brought their boats. According to figures provided by the Saudis, the sea journey from Monaco, for example, is 1944 kilometers and from Barcelona, 1860 kilometers. An important detail is that this project will be the first to build in Neo. Some store openings are even planned for as early as 2024. Another aspect that has greatly advanced over the past year in Saudi Arabia's effort to make the country's voice heard in the international game, the latest example for 2029. Saudi Arabia has been chosen to host the Asian Winter Games, a competition that will take place in Trojina. A surprising choice for several reasons. Beautiful as it may appear on a 3D plan, Trojina is still only a dream. Work has already begun, as shown in a promotional video released at the beginning of the year. But will the place be sufficient to get all the infrastructure on the ground in time? And as it to add another countdown to the project. Neom's mastermind are repeating the date of 2026 for delivery of the bulk of the sports resort for the future. Another point of contention, the weather. Putting desert climate and snow in the same sentence requires a rather intense mental exercise. However, the Saudis have put forward several solutions. The first is that the Hejaz mountain range ranging in the altitude from 1500 to 2600 meters where Trojina is located, it is the coolest place in the country. According to the promoters, temperatures drop below zero in winter and year-round temperatures are generally below 10 degrees Celsius true, but to get snow you also need clouds and substantial precipitation, and yet in the middle of this desert. There is an average of just two days of snow a year. That leaves artificial snow cannons and option widely chosen by Beijing in China for the 2022 Winter Olympics, but this solution would be completely at odds with Neom's ecological message. Another project in sight is skiing but without snow. Engineers are currently testing a wide range of surfaces on site, enabling winter sports to be enjoyed even without snow. On the shores of the Red Sea, the Oxagon project has also seen a number of developments. The first of these was the announcement of the construction of the world's largest green hydrogen plant, a facility costing over 8.4 billion US dollars, the financing of which has been now completed according to NEO. 
Starting in 2026, it will produce 600 tons of green hydrogen per day. The plant will also supply the line with energy alongside huge wind farms since the goal for the linear city is to be carbon neutral. In Oxagon, an army of machinery has landed to prepare for the construction of the buildings. But currently, only three plants can really give a glimpse of what the port city of the future will look like. Plans for partnership with companies all over the world are proudly displayed by those in charge of the new project. The latest example is the flying calves that appear in last year's promotional videos and which will link the different parts of Neo. Now they are a reality. The German company Volocopter and Neo announced last June that in C2 flights test of their aircraft have been a complete success. The race towards the future therefore seems to be taking shape on certain aspects of the operation. Notable advances made possible by an army of experts working together to make Neom a reality. To date, no fewer than 60 different nationalities are contributing their expertise to the operation. But it's going to take many sleepless nights to bring Neom's flagship project to completion because the line is undoubtedly the most complex and ambitious urban planning project of this century. At present, as can be seen from various videos, the construction site has begun with excavation work and the installation of some pre-construction equipments. However, no infrastructure of note has yet seen the light of the day. Given the sheer size of the city which has stretched over 170 kilometers, it was necessary to choose a place to stop. According to information provided by Neom, work began near the Red Sea where the light is due to plunge. A canal is currently being dug. This will enable boats from the Red Sea to reach a marina that will be one of the gateways to this city of the future. Minimal scale models give an idea of the interior of the line. A slice of this vertical building reveals the primary concept of this gigantic infrastructure. To have access to all amenities in 5 minutes maximum, whether home, work, school or public spaces, everything is designed to be close at hand in a three-dimensional city. The principle behind the line is to assemble 140 modules, each 800 meters long and 200 meters wide. Rising 500 meters above the ground, each module will be able to accommodate 80,000 people and will repeat it in a linear fashion until it reaches the 170 km dream by Saudi Arabia. But what's really interesting about this modular concept is that it offers a flexible environment that can be structurally adapted to the city's changing needs. In concrete terms, the engineers have imagined the urban units as a chasis, where the different blocks of the city can be modified as required. In short, the function of each module will not be immutable and will be able to transform itself like a city on the move, adapting to the changing needs of its inhabitants. So, for example, a commercial zone can be transformed into a school if the need arises. For the moment, Neom's managers are announcing a first phase of construction due to be completed by 2030, but one thing is certain, we'll have to wait decades to see the city to come in completion. In the meantime, this futuristic vision raises many questions. Not least about the feasibility of such a titanic project, this environmental question is often raised even if it's intended to be ecological, the construction of such an infrastructure will have a huge environmental impact. For example, it's hard to imagine that all the machinery used on the site is carbon neutral. Not to mention the millions of tons of concrete, steel and glass that will have to be produced and transported to the construction site. Another criticism of the line is the city's glass barrier, which is likely to damage the local ecosystem and block the migratory routes of local species. These are also many unknowns when it comes to the reception of such a project. Building is one thing, but having the capacity to attract 9 million people over time is quite another. What can be done if the enthusiasm for living in the new premises is not there? When the first deliveries are made, will the costly construction work continue? These are the questions that remain unanswered for the time being until the first phase of construction is completed. In any case, I am keeping a close eye on this project, so if you are interested by a new video, feel free to contact us and give your reactions in the comments below. Stay tuned for more videos.